Hello YouTubers and YouTuberettes. I will talk about the uh, serious matter here, so maybe something that the kids might not uh, want to hear. You might want to put them in a different room, pause the video for a while, and then uh, listen to it uh, with other adults. And I will be talking about uh, my arrest record, and uh, that uh, happened back in the 1970s, what uh, I'm going to be telling you about. And it seems there's some people asking questions now on the internet about me, so might as well clear that up. I lived in Las Vegas, and uh, one day in the 1970s, uh, I rode in a vehicle from Las Vegas to Carson City. With me were three other people, and we rode to Nevada State Prison. That's in Carson City. Carson City is the capital city of Nevada. And when we got to the uh, prison, there's an outside gate, and we drove into that. That's the Sally Port area, S-A-L-L-Y-P-O-R-T, Sally Port area. And we were all searched, and uh, the vehicle searched, and we went on in the inside gate and went into the prison yard and we had uh, first first thing we did is we ate with the prisoners there was a big lunch and we sat down with the prisoners and ate whatever they happened to have i don't remember but uh, then we got uh, back out into the prison yard and we set up our drums and amplifiers and musical instruments and we got the piano from wherever they kept it at the prison, and I did a show. And the show was uh, probably an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And then we left the prison the same day. We were there for probably two hours, and uh, I drove home. Now, that was in the early 1970s. Now, that was the only time I have ever been inside the walls of Nevada State Prison. That's the only time it happened. I did a show there. It was a fabulous show. We got some of the convicts up to perform with us in our band, and uh, I wish we'd had video cameras back in those days, but we did not. So it is uh, uh, just a fond memory in the minds of the few people who might remember that show. Now. About 1977, I uh, became involved with the court system once again. I was arrested. I was arrested, I was tried, I was convicted by a jury, and I was sentenced. And the sentence uh, was life in prison. And the sentence was life in prison. And the sentence was life in prison. Three. Three lives in prison. I regret that I have but one life to give for uh, this video. But the charge, there's, there is a law, 201.190 uh, Nevada statute, there is a law about public decency. You're not supposed to have... Uh, intimate relationships with other people uh, in public. Uh, 201.190, Commission of Certain Sexual Acts in Public. I'm reading off the screen here. But in uh, 1977, 201.190 read differently. I helped get it changed. I was in court more than 50 times, and uh, I did write either writs or motions. I can't remember now because it's been a long time ago, but I wrote either some writs or some motions and I got um, consideration by Nevada Supreme Court and uh, I would always talk about the vagueness of uh, the 201.190. What 201.190 was in 1977 and again, if you have an attorney, have them check it up, but make sure they look at the 1977 description of infamous crime against nature. 
and it is written very specifically the, T-H-E, singular, one only. The infamous crime, without an S on the end, it's a singular uh, event that uh, is illegal. The infamous crime against nature. I was uh, charged with that, and what it is, anything that they want it to be, and I'm talking about the prosecution, the district attorney's office, uh, if a police officer didn't like you, they could uh, charge you with infamous crime against nature. If you had any sort of sexual contact with anyone other than uh, a man and a woman who were married to each other. Anything else was considered infamous crime against nature. And without getting into details, I will say that uh, there was a trial and the witness against me, and he was over 18 years of age, the witness against me admitted on the witness stand that he was lying when my attorney cross-examined him about certain errors in uh, what he had said and used as his statement in court. He admitted that he was getting two felonies dropped. He'd been held in jail uh, until he would testify against me and he'd get two felonies dropped. So they said to the jury, the prosecutor, when they made their closing statement, said something to the effect that, hold on one second, uh -huh. I will turn that off, and we'll forget about that. Um, the person who had been on the stand, who was the only witness against me, said some things that uh, when he was cross-examined he said, oh yeah, that's right, that didn't happen. He did admit that the thing he talked about had not happened. The jury was told that uh, by, by the prosecution that uh, he was telling the truth and he, he didn't get anything wrong. Any, anyway, I was found guilty by a jury. Now, the judge in the case um, was an interesting person and I'm pretty sure without uh, anything having been said at the time I'm sure he saw that the jury had reached a conclusion just because it's sort of like when you point a finger at someone and accuse them of something some people believe it. So the uh, result of the trial was that I was convicted. Now, the only uh, penalty for infamous crime against nature in 1977, the only thing that a judge could do, which also made this uh, statute unconstitutional back then, the judge could not say, well, it's from three years to five years, five years to ten years. They didn't have any latitude. They had to sentence the person to life in prison. So I had three lives in prison looming ahead of me. Um, came time for the sentence to be announced and the judge said, uh, sentence you count number one, life in prison, count number two, life in prison, count number three, life in prison. And then he said, before even Ten seconds had gone by after he announced the sentencing. He said, this sentence is suspended, meaning I would not be going to prison. And he said, and in exchange for uh, not going to prison, I'm going to place you on probation with the first year to be uh, in the Clark County Jail. Now. A few things happened after that. Uh, the most important, uh, I, guess, I, I, I won't even try to list these in order of importance, but a friend of mine, 
a lady named Kay uh, came to visit me in uh, the prison and it was kind of uh, interesting and weird uh, way that it all happened. Uh, there were visiting hours, and I couldn't tell you what they were, but probably something like uh, noon to four o'clock, whatever it was. There were certain visiting hours for uh, people outside to come visit the prisoners. And this was about 10 o'clock at night, and a guard at the jail came to the area. I, I was in the trustee area, there were about 40 or 50 people in there, and the guard came in and said, Will it? Yeah, he said, um, You have a visitor. And everybody, What? A visitor at 10 p.m.? This is impossible. Anyway, I went with him to the visiting area, and on the way there, the guard said, You must have some uh, very powerful friends. I said, what do you mean? He said, the, the governor, the governor of Nevada, arranged the visit. Uh, he got a call from the governor's office and uh, the visit is going to take place. So I went and had a meeting with Kay and we talked a little bit. She she was a friend of mine and knew her from, for many years. And uh, yeah, I won't get too distracted here. We'll focus on the legal matters. Um, Kay made some suggestions and we planned some things. And we went into court for the sentencing. Um, there was a stack of letters uh, asking for uh, leniency and uh, a whole bunch of things were going on and somehow or other at the, at Clark County Jail they had uh, books and magazines for the prisoners to read but we were not allowed any law books and and I was writing writs already without knowing what I was doing I was going ahead and doing it because I had enough information about how to do it but a Reader's Digest magazine came into the uh, place where I was with the uh, trustees and I started reading the Reader's Digest. Reader's Digest used to have some good uh, stories. And one of the stories was about Ex Parte Milligan, E-X-P-A-R-T-E-M-I-L-L-I-G-A-N, Ex Parte Milligan, you can look it up. It has to do with due process. And I realized after reading it that the judge did not have the authority to place me in jail as a condition of probation. And the reason being, it's not in the law of Nevada. The law of Nevada said when a person commits the infamous crime against nature, they shall be sentenced to prison for life. That's the only, th and there was no description of what a infamous crime against nature was. Anyway, 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 the uh, result of my reading that, I, I wrote a writ or a motion and I asked to be sent back down. This is after he had ruled um, on the sentence and uh, place me in prison for life, supposedly, but with uh, um, the first year being uh, on, on probation in Clark County Jail. And so uh, I got myself back into court and they brought in my attorney and the, the prosecutor and the judge says, uh, Mr. Willard, I have your document here where you want to uh, challenge my authority to uh, place you in Clark County Jail for one year. He said, but before I rule on this, I think it would be good for you to listen to a uh, writ or motion uh, that the district attorney, deputy district attorney wants to uh, submit. I said, fine. So the de deputy district attorney said, 
uh, we asked for the release of Tom Willett and uh, what the heck is going on? And he talked about what a great model president, which I, I'm no more great than, than the next person. Um, but yeah, this is the district attorney. This is the person who's supposed to be coming after me and he's asking for my release. And it dawned on me, I realized what had happened. I, I happened to step on uh, a nerve when I talked about how the judge does not have the authority because there were a whole bunch of people in Clark County Jail who were spending their first year of probation inside the Clark County Jail and they would all have to be released if the judge ruled in my favor. Now, if he did not rule in my favor, I would go to the Nevada Supreme Court. They knew that. And I would have won. There's, uh, there are many people that I want to thank, but, but anyway, I was released and uh, I never had any more problems with that. Uh, now there's a YouTube attorney wannabe who thinks that uh, something had happened 45 years. I, is there anyone else out there who's got 45 years of a clean record and uh, I haven't uh, sneezed in public or anything? I mean, let's uh, be sensible about this. Uh, 201.190 was an unconstitutional law. I helped get it changed. They charged me with a crime that had only one punishment, inf infamous crime against nature. Anyone who commits that shall be sentenced to life. And you can look at, and again, if you have an attorney friend who has access to 1977 law books, get them to take a look at this. Ask them, is this constitutional when you have a vague um, supposed law, a statute on the books, and it says you can't do whatever I think is uh, a crime. Even if you didn't do it, it doesn't matter if I think you did it. Um, that's about all. I, I will thank some people. Uh, the Hull family, H-U-L-L, -L, the Baker family, B-A-K-E-R. The, uh, let me make sure I get all, all of them here. Uh, the, I'm reading the wrong page here. Anyway, the Bakers, the Halls, the Bannermans, um, Judge J. Charles Thompson, I don't know if he's still alive or not, I hope he is, and um, who else am I forgetting? Uh, I know I'm, I'm forgetting a lot of people, but uh, my experience at Nevada State Prison, they had good food for me, they treated me nicely, the prisoners were nice, I have no uh, bad memories of any of the experiences I've had. And I'm happy to be at YouTube and uh, let your friends know about the video and let them watch it too. Uh, anyone who's in a situation where you are dealing with uh, law enforcement that is not proper, do stand your ground. I did not make any deals with any uh, police or district attorney or anyone. Everything happened because I happened to have some friends and because things went well for me. I've had a good life, so I thank you very much for watching.